So the first thing that I'm going to say is if you do have your material packet, you can open it up and find in it this uh, set of sheets. So this first one is just the slide presentation. You can follow along with this presentation on these pages. And then the second thing is this map. So if you do have the printed materials, you'll see there are some spots here. If we have left anybody off of this, please feel free to mark those down on the side here. Um, if you do not have the printed materials, please still mark down any agencies that um, that you see that we've missed or that we've left off of this. Uh, just you know, mark those down, and then we will uh, we will review those once the presentation is over. So really quick, the purpose of this map is really to address the concern that we've been hearing for the past few years of Neighbors Changing Flint that, you know, residents really want to know more about what resources are available to them. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of different organizations working, working in the city, and it's hard to sometimes tell, what can I get out of this organization? What can I get out of that organization? Um, so this resource is really intended to clearly show what those different agencies, organizations, and individuals are whose work is really focused on, on addressing the needs of Flint residents. So this map is not a guide to social service organizations, you know, educational, um, food access, health organizations. There are obviously a ton of really important organizations working in Flint that do provide social services. Um, however, this map is really focusing on physical neighborhood improvements. So these are organizations that help you do cleanups or uh, you know, developing uh, new residential homes and things like that. Um, the other thing that I wanna point out here is that again, this map is not complete. We know that we have left out some people and part of why we're doing this presentation tonight is so that you can let us know who else we need to include here. Um, so please, like I said, mark those down as we're as we're going through the presentation, uh, and we can we can look at those later on. All right. So the first thing here, how to read this map. So basically, the agencies, organizations, and individuals are represented here in several different categories. Um, so the categories are not necessarily mutually exclusive, meaning that some organizations have you know, as an example, some organizations provide infrastructural support as well as technical assistance. And so that's why you'll see some overlap there, excuse me, um, with, uh, with both of those different types of resources. Um, and right now I'm going to pass it over to Ashley to start us out here, um, talking about what the, what really the center of this is. Yeah, absolutely. So like Michael said, this map is really intended to talk about the, the organizations that provide support services to neighborhood groups and do neighborhood related work. So at the center of this map is the residents of Flint. Residents set the goals, objectives, and directives for all of the work that's being done to improve neighborhoods. The entities represented in the periphery of this core are obligated to take those directives directly from residents. We then have our direct support organizations as the next layer. So those are folks like Prim and Sage, Flint Neighborhoods United, and the Neighborhood Engagement Hub. These are organizations who are directly resident facing and resident serving and serve the entire city of Flint. One of the things that I do wanna make note of is there are some organizations that serve residents directly that are not represented as a part of this initial core because they have place-based services that are specific to particular geographies in the city of Flint. They're represented in another list that we'll get to shortly. Great, thank you for that, Ashley. Absolutely. The other thing I just remembered that I wanted to point out, um, if you have any questions about who these organizations are, we do include this list of, uh, of resource providers. Um, again, if you haven't already picked up your packets, let us know and we will get those to you. Otherwise you can find this uh, linked in the email confirmation for this presentation. 
So the first category that I'm going to talk about is neighborhood development. So these are organizations that uh, development agencies that focus on supporting community development. So they can be both nonprofit or for, for profit, um, market driven or not, but these are organizations that are developing residential properties and commercial properties. Um, so as an example, you know, the Uptown Reinvestment Corporation focuses primarily on market driven projects, meaning, you know, we've identified a need for a Jimmy John's at this location. So we're going to support the development of this Jimmy John's. Whereas an organization like uh, North Flint Reinvestment Corporation identifies a need within the community to uh, create a supermarket or a cooperative food, food market. Um, and they are focusing on that sort of outside of market concerns. Um, other organizations here do provide things like um, critical home repairs. Uh, so Met Metro Community Development and uh, Habitat for Humanity both do that kind of, that kind of uh, very immediate resident serving work. Um, yeah, so that's the sort of community development base of agencies in Flint. The next thing we have here is infrastructure. So these are both public and private entities that are supporting the physical infrastructure of neighborhoods. So they have a uh, kind of mandated uh, duty to serve uh, these different functions. So as an example, you know, the city of Flint uh, contracts Republic, uh, Republic Way Services to do trash pickup. Um, we have Consumers Electricity, which manages the streetlight grid and then the City of Flint Public Works Department, which uh, handles city-owned uh, facilities in physical infrastructure. The Genesee County Land Bank sort of fits between these two because they do focus on you know, opening up properties for development, but they also are focusing on providing infrastructural support to the properties that they own. And um, I realize here we, we point out that the Flint Residents Guide to Neighborhood Improvement Resources um, is uh, a really good resource to figure out how to access these different resources available in, in this category. Um, we are gonna be making a draft of that available in the next round of packets. So um, come March, that will be, that draft will be available. All right, then our next category here is technical assistance. So this can range from project management to support to skills training and educational programs. Um, as an example, you know, Edible Flint provides support for uh, community members who are developing uh, urban agriculture projects in their neighborhood. So that's a really direct form of technical assistance. The overlap between technical assistance and infrastructure, I think, is kind of interesting because you have like the Genesee Conservation District, which is, um, you know, they're mandated to uh, administer the city's network of, of street trees. Um, but they also provide different resources for residents on, you know, how to tend to trees in private property. Um, same thing with uh, Keep Genesee County Beautiful. You know, they are a county organization that is charged with um, supporting parks in the in the community. But they also do a lot of different programs, like the um, uh, like the Park Adopter program. We also have the I have to shout myself out the City of Flint Plan Department of Planning and Development. Um, so through or, uh, initiatives like the Neighborhood Planning Initiative, uh, the Choice Neighborhoods Initiative, we are supporting the you know, public infrastructure as well as providing support to neighborhood groups to make these types of improvements on their own and, and with assistance from, uh, from our office. Um, our next portion here, so this is uh, kind of what Ashley was talking about earlier, place-based organizations can really have a range of, um, of services and resources. So, you know, they might be involved in neighborhood development. They might be, you know, involved in technical assistance, as an example. Um, you know, I heard Norma, Norma Sane uh, from Court Street Village is joining us. Uh, Court Street Village Nonprofit is an agency that provides direct assistance to the um, Central Park and Fairfield Village neighborhoods. So they offer technical assistance in terms of project management, um, fundraising, grant 
applications, things like that, but they are geographically focused. Um, same thing with these other organizations like Illuminating Community Change, the Latinx Center, Urban Renaissance Center, and Asbury CDC, as well as the North Flint Neighborhood Action Council, which um, again is really, you know, supporting, directly supporting neighborhood groups in uh, project administration and fundraising. Then our next portion here are the funders. So the funding agencies, these are philanthropic agencies that are providing direct support to neighborhoods through grant making and other training and capacity building assistance. Um, so as an example, the, the local funders like Community Foundation and Ruth Mott have helped to um, support this workshop series. Um, they have also, you know, CS Mott has their focus on Flint initiative. Um, the UM Flint outreach uh, has, you know, funded a lot of different projects from, uh, you know, they have the design studio working on, on murals, which we'll talk about in just a minute, uh, as well as things like the porch project, which came out of uh, UM Flint um, research project, or it, it wasn't, it didn't come out of the research project, but the research project supported the porch project. Our next one here is communications. So these are all news outlets, whether they be blogs or print publications um, that are really focused on local events and stories. Um, so these are all really good resources for getting the word out about your different projects and initiatives. Um, I know our community, our voice in particular has a real you know, focus on getting the word out about community projects. Um, then the last category here is elected officials. So these are members and representatives of governmental bodies. They are either directly elected or appointed by elected members. So you have the County Board of Commissioners, which is in control of the, the county government, city council, obviously in charge of um, city business, as well as appointing the planning commission, which looks at different development proposals and says yes or no. Uh, and then, of course, the city of Flint mayor and the mayor's office. So that all being said, we would love to hear if there are any organizations that we have left off of here um, that you think we should include. Um, if you do have any thoughts about this, you can let us know which category you think they would fall in. Um, if you can't think of the category that they would fall in, that's fine. Um, but looks like we aren't getting too many responses. Maybe folks are thinking. Um, otherwise, if um, yeah, if anybody has any thoughts that they want to share, uh, please feel free to raise your hand. We see the porch project. That's a great that's a great example. They are an organization develop uh, working directly with residents for neighborhood development. Um, Yep. Oh, and I should say also uh, for folks who are just joining us, Teresa just um, dropped a link in the chat to a website where you can provide direct feedback. Um, but also, if uh, if anybody has any thoughts that they want to share about this, uh, please feel free to raise your hand, and Teresa can call on you. Flint 360. Awesome. Community TV and online streaming. That's exciting. Yeah. You'll have to let us know when that comes out. We can send it around to everybody. Who's behind that? Me, a boy here. Sorry, wife just brought. Uh, lunch, dinner, whatever it's called. <laughs> Me and Norma have a hookup. So uh, yeah, I can show you the, stu the studio later. We're going to be interviewing Harold Ford tomorrow um, here in the studio. All right. Sounds good. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm not hearing... Uh, not seeing anymore. that we're missing a whole lot, Michael. We just must have gotten everybody on here. <laughs> Guess so. Um, you know, we tried to be comprehensive, but uh, if anybody does have any other suggestions, we we are going to try to make this um, this guide uh, 
you know, a little bit more publicly available uh, over the coming coming months and weeks. So um, if you do have any, any more thoughts, please feel free to let us know about those. Um, otherwise, I think we can go ahead. Oh, the Maid Institute, that's a great, that's a great suggestion. Um, yeah, they work a lot with, I think, I'm not sure if they're specifically place-based. I know that they work primarily on the north side. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a really good sort of technical assistance as well as neighborhood development organization. Um, similar to, I would say the Urban Renaissance Center. So that's a really good example for us to include. All right, so let's move on to the King Avenue Plus MLK Junior Mural Project. So this is a really exciting um, project that uh, was spearheaded by the King Avenue Plus Neighborhood Association. Um, and I am going to hand it over to Connie Edwards, who can tell us a little bit more about how this mural was created uh, and the different organizations that they convened to make this happen. So uh, Connie, I hope you are ready for us. Yes, I am. Beautiful. Yeah. All, right, All right, take it away. Okay, I am so excited since this had taken place and I have shared so much. So if I go off on a binge going down a different road, just stop me and say, pull me back in because I have really tried to sell this and share this with everybody I know. Well, the mural, uh, a great project in the north side of Flint. And just in case, if you don't know where that's at, that's between Pasadena and McClellan Street located on Martin Luther King Avenue. Uh, this came about, I would say with a group of community people who got together that wanted to improve and honor Dr. Martin Luther King's name, especially as you travel throughout the United States and you go down to the cities and you find that street and you look at it and you go, wow. And we came together as the King Avenue plus a small group of us, and most of us are seniors. So we really put a lot of effort in this and we thought about what can we do to improve this honoring of Dr. King Jr. We went around and we, we, we had workshops, we pulled our ideas together and we came up with themes and concepts just to focus on some of the business in that areas and the potential for more business, we need to clean up and add something to Martin Luther King Avenue. We spoke with many partnerships in the community. I mean, there's so many resources, I can't name you all of them. And I was like, I was just excited when I found out what was out there and continue to work with partnerships such as um, the Flint Public Art Project, Joseph and Serini. Uh, we work with uh, U of M, Ben Gato. His class came in and gave us a little bit of guidance on what we wanted We talked about it. We held more workshops and discussed this with Michael Lawyer and the urban designers. Uh, we talked with um, downtown development so that we know what we were supposed to be doing. And there's many of them. There's a few such as my Applewood. They gave us information and guidance. The land bank owned the property and that's where we went to to make sure we're following all the criteria there. Then we got together again and our president and our body of small people came together and said, okay, now how can we utilize what's already there to make improvements? And let's look at the partnerships that we have. And I mean, they really directed us. Then it came down to keep Genesee County beautiful. They got us really going, Nancy Edwards. So once the funds came in and we collaborated some more and, and, and not only did they collaborate, they would refer us to the right entities to help us move about. So once we got our artists, which was local, 
and that was good for us. Kevin uh, Burdick, I believe is, was his name. And we said what we wanted. We had an idea. We know what we wanted down there. And we said, okay, now here's the dream. We're thinking about the future and what we wanted to do for King Avenue Plus. And the mural came alive. But not only think about the future, we're, we're actually living in the dream today. So with this mural, I mean a 45 foot mirror on these old dilapidated buildings, just awesome. I mean, awesome cars were stopping and in the middle of the street and I'm looking, I'm going out there every day watching this just kind of develop and take place. And I was just like in awe. And how many of you have seen this mural? I hope you have, if you haven't, do drive by there tomorrow. And we thought this would be an educational piece where we could bring in later down the line. Thank you so much. An educational piece that we could uh, include the Flint community schools, outside entities that could come in and talk about, just talk about who these people are. They're our history and why, and what did they do to contribute? So we're honoring them in the education and the history of these people who took a step to make this dream come alive. Now we're just in the beginning stage because if you drive down there now, there's some other things that all of these other partnerships have helped us with. And I'm telling you, it's not only about the funds, but just guiding us through the resources that are available. And right now I'm pushing everything and, and I'm getting to know the businesses because I share with them on a weekly basis that, okay, take a look outside, see what you see. And we want to improve your businesses. We want to bring in more business. We want additional focus on business so that we can build up our community. This is King Avenue Business District and a community that we still live in. So this mural has great pride, great pride. But I want to give a good shout out to King Avenue Plus, the senior and the people who are doing the labor. I mean, we bug Ashley, we bug Michael, we bug uh, Miss Edwards, we bug Jane, and all of us put our heads together and we try to work together to do something good for the community. Any questions? Thank you so much, Connie. That was really great. Mm. Yeah, if anybody does have any questions, uh, please feel free to raise your hand. Uh, you can do that by um, going to the chat box and then actually wait. Where is it? I think you have to go hover over your own little square. Oh, that's right. And then click uh, reactions um, and raise your hand or click on your screen and raise your hand. If you go down to reactions and you do a little thing, uh, we can see it or you can just put in the chat that you know hey i have a question can't figure out raise hand <laughs> that's fine too uh michael there's also mm -hmm. one other thing we also decided that we needed to provide information on the murals so mm -hmm. we're still in the planning stage so as groups come by or people stop by and and wonder who is this and what is this about and what era did this take place we're coming up with some type of suggestion box where people can just pick up this literature and read about it and contact us if they wanna join the community or ask us any questions also so that we can get some feedback from the community. Absolutely. So I think one of the things that's just really, I think remarkable about this project is that it really has, you know, brought in organizations from all of these different categories so mm -hmm. you know you have the land bank which controls the property you know they, they yes. own the property you need to get the permission uh you have the infrastructure so the city of flint department of public works you know looks at the conditions of the sidewalks and everything uh you have mm -hmm. the keep genesee county beautiful which actually yes. um you know supports this grant making and and fundraising and then you have the flint public art project that provides their 
uh, technical support in finding finding a local artist. So um, I just think it's a really great great project. It looks like Karma has a question. Mike, we, we have, uh, Mark, Michael, we actually have uh, two or three questions. We have two oh, questions sweet. and a comment in the chat. So Eartha had a question. Uh, she said, how can we help and join? How can we join in helping? And then Karma had a question and Kelsey had an idea and Stephanie had an idea. Cool. So let's, um, Connie, if you want to, if you want to respond to Eartha, how can we join in helping? Okay, probably in the text box, uh, chat box, uh, give me her number or her email and I could find out and give her some information on how to contact us when we meet. Cool. Um, I will be calling you. <laughs> oh, so we have a suggestion here, uh, QR code, that's not a bad idea. Um, so that you could just scan it with your phone uh, and have uh, feedback Google form or something like that. That's a good idea. Great idea. Um, mm -hmm. Then Karma, looks like uh, you had a question. Feel free to go ahead. Yeah, my question is, if we wanted a mural in our neighborhood, who do we contact? Uh, <laughs> well, you got to start planning and come up with a vision. And the list of many of these e um, resources and partnerships I mentioned, there's numerous ones and I can mention those in the chat box. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so if, again, if you look at Joe the- Joe Chapini, thank you. Yep, Joe yes. Chapani with mm -hmm. uh, Public Art Project. We include uh, contact information in this guide that uh, again is in the informational packet as well as linked on your confirmation emails. Um, so yeah, I, you can go to the Public Art Project. Uh, the Downtown Development Authority, like Connie mentioned, has a placemaking specialist. Uh, her name is Katie Yellow. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of opportunity out there. Thank um, you. So uh, Shay, Stephanie, had um, you had a question that you sent to me. Um, how can you get your ideas for the community as Connie has done for hers? So. I think, um, are you asking, how do you come up with the ideas? Yeah, basically I'm just stating, how can you get your own ideals out there um, and get supported for your community as well? That's, well a great, we, that's a great point. Oh, yeah. sorry, kind of go ahead. Well, we held workshops and invited the community. We also did footwork, <laughs> knocking on doors, sending out flyers, emails, just to see where the community stood. And then we met as a body and our theme basically centers around, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So we wanted something that related to that, that would send a message out that would pop. But those are some of the small avenues that you start with finding out your community because you don't want to go out there doing just anything. You know, you'll get a whiplash, but you want to make sure that it fits with your community. And then all the other uh, resources and partnerships that were mentioned they will help guide you quite a bit. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, I, I would just add to that, Shay, that um, you know, I think that organizations like the Neighborhood Engagement Hub, um, mm -hmm. the Neighborhood Planning Initiative, which, uh, which I work on, uh, are really good ways to help you kind of structure what that outreach looks like. Um, so as an example, through the Neighborhood Planning Initiative, we, you know, send out postcards to, to everyone in the neighborhood, um, you know, letting them know that there's this initiative going on and to get in touch if they're interested in uh, getting involved in the neighborhood improvements. Um, and then um, Ashley is just saying in the, in the chat box here, uh, we are going to be doing an action planning workshop uh, right up next. So that will help to give you a little bit of a better idea of how to, you know, how to, how to make an idea into a plan. Um, and that's, you know, something that the engagement hub does for uh, neighborhood groups all across the, all across the city. Thank you. Um, Teresa, do we have any more questions? Nope, I don't think so. Uh, I believe Trafina has been answering some of them in the chat. So if oh, anybody sweet. has any other questions, please feel free to put it in the chat or if you're on the phone, um, you can unmute and uh, just say, hey, I'm on the phone. I can't chat, I'd like to ask a question. 
And if you're on the phone and you're trying to unmute because we've muted you, you can press star six to unmute yourself. So if we've unmuted you and you are on dialing in only, you can press star six um, and then you can switch to just using your, your phone's mute system, your phone's audio system to mute and unmute if you like. All right. So we're going to move on to our post meeting questions. So like I mentioned before, um, this is just to give us some feedback, uh, whether this was helpful. <laughs> um, so if you did not, if you were not here for the start of the session, um, we're getting responses through a software called Poll Everywhere. So um, you will either go to the URL pollev.com slash COF community or text the word COF community to 22333. The uh, instructions on how to do that are just at the top of this slide. Um, I see also Chad, uh, Chad brought up that the public art project has a uh, initiative called Pixel Sticks where they put up little um, markers uh, on all of the murals that they've supported around town. So you can basically scan a little code and then it gives you more information about that. Um, I think it also directs you to like other uh, other artworks around the around the neighborhood, things like that. Um, oh, and then Trofina says, this is a very good point. Once you get resident input in your project, you can speak to a program officer at the Community Foundation, Small Grants, or the Ruth Mott Foundation for a larger project. So like we were mentioning before, those local funders, they are interested in you know helping you to actually realize your your plan. So um, definitely keep those in mind. They can provide some support in in actually coming up with what those look like. So all right, let's see what our responses are here. All right, we did pretty good. Uh, we don't have any definitely not, so that's good. <laughs> uh, if you mostly do not know, please feel free to if that's you reach out to either myself or Ashley, uh, and we can help you, you know, navigate some of those resources if you're still having questions about those. Um, but I'm glad to hear that uh, most people feel like, like they are familiar with the organizations. Um, so that's great. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next question here, which is, um, I would feel comfortable working with several other organizations to implement neighborhood improvement projects. So again, if uh, if you would feel comfortable going to different organizations and saying, hey, we have this idea, let's make it happen. Um, if you definitely feel like uh, you, you're comfortable with that, then that would be uh, option A. If you definitely do not feel comfortable, option E. Um, and let's see what our responses look like. Awesome. All right. Our confidence has only grown. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, sweet. All right. Well, I, I hope that this presentation was uh, played a role in you all feeling more confident. Um, as I said, if you do have any questions, reach out to uh, myself or Ashley. Um, again, you can uh, go to this packet, which does list out the resources available from these different organizations, as well as contact information, um, things like that. So, uh, yep, and Trofina is pointing out that we do have more hard copies of the presentation materials. Um, so please feel free to drop by the Neighborhood Engagement Hub tomorrow. Uh, if you're not able to make it out there, I should also say that I'm available to deliver these. So if anybody is missing the uh, the meeting materials, please feel free to reach out and I can come drop them off, do a, a little drop and dash. So I'm gonna put my email address here once again. Really quickly, Karma pointed out in the chat that we didn't say what time the packet pickup oh. was for tomorrow. So that's from Thank five you. to seven tomorrow evening at the Neighborhood Engagement Hub on ML King. And when you come by, you'll have a chance to see the mural. It's directly across the street from our office. Yep. All right. 
So that I think concludes this presentation. We do have one last slide here. Um, so if you are planning to attend our next session, which is gonna start in just a minute here, uh, you can do this after. But if you uh, are planning to, uh, to take off after this presentation, if you wouldn't mind to please um, just go to the post-meeting feedback. This one, you do have to go to the URL. Um, so if you already have the website pulled up on your screen, it should be showing up right there. Um, otherwise, we will make this uh, we will make this survey link um, available after uh, after the session. Um, yep. So once again, if anybody does need uh, me to deliver their packets, please feel free to reach out in the chat, and I will follow up with you after the meeting. Mm -hmm.